Hey, Jesse in Burlington, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut your second pair of glasses that you're getting from me. You originally got the Polo 2045. Tonight you are getting the Gucci one, to, don't take my word for it, the Gucci 1066 in color 4UP, and which is the black and the red. And of course the nice thing is, they move the black and the red to the front of the frame. Hopefully you can see that, the classic Gucci black and red. And of course the red green band on the black rubber temples. Of course all Gucci's are made in Italy. Hopefully you can see that. And of course right there is your serial number that you can register your product with Gucci with your card of authenticity, your COA as it's referred to. Let me open that up. This is where you would write down the model number, which is on the serial number, which is on the inside of the temple, which is hard for you to see here, but you will be able to see it when you get these in the mail. I'm going to put everything back in here and I'll show you the rest of your accoutrements in just a moment. But for now, I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses, one of which says Gucci. Let me go ahead and pop that out and I'm going to take your Italian frame and putting into the tracer element of my French edger and hopefully they won't start fighting. Hit the green button. The little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of the frame before moving over and doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Gucci frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you have vision insurance or flex dollars and you just want a banging pair of glasses, my receipt has my federal ID tax number so you'll get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. Jesse, yours are prescription. Ain't no getting around that. You need them. So this is the shape of the lens, only magnified. If I minify it down to the actual size, that green outline is what I'm working with, but I'm going to magnify it as I keep working. Let's go ahead and type in your pupillary distance, which is 66, so that means 33 for both eyes. The computer starts at 32.5, so I don't have far to go to get it to 33. I'm going to hit this plus button, and it's going to go up in half millimeters to that. Now let's go ahead and come down here and get your lenses prepped. Into my old trusty Marco 101 lensometer, I'm going to zero everything out. In fact, let me dial that in a little better. Your right eye reads minus one and a quarter, minus a quarter at nine. We have got minus one and a quarter, minus a quarter. I'm going to spin the axis wheel to nine, one tick mark away from ten. Let me go ahead and mark this as your right lens. That one is your right. And you're going to receive all the manufacturer's original packaging to make sure that you are getting the Essilor brand Transition Signature 7 lenses with Crizal Alizé. So I'm going to take your lens out of the protective sleeve that it comes in. It actually has a little protective laminate on the front of the lens that protects it during shipping to me so nothing can rub against the front side of the lens. I'm going to go ahead and take that out remove the laminate. I'm going to put those on your lenses when I ship to you. Let's see, put the power drum at minus one and a quarter. Put your lens in, rotate until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of your lens, check your astigmatism correction of which you have just the tiniest amounts. I'm going to put three dots on your lenses, which are hard for you to see, they're even harder for me to see. Let me grab my pen. I'm going to put some dots on there so I can follow that. I apologize if any of this is out of focus. And this is the right lens, so put an R on there. Let's do the same thing for the left, which is just minus 175 sphere. Minus 175 sphere, zero for astigmatism, of which you got none in the left eye. Let me go ahead and mark this one L. And take it out. Remove the little protective laminate from the front. Stick that on there so I can put that on the lenses afterwards. Put it in. Find the optical center. I don't have to rotate your lens because you have no astigmatism correction. And really, I only need to put one dot on the center of this. So that's where it's going to go. And this is not the right lens, so I'm going to put an L on here, which stands for not right. Now, if you missed any of that, let me recap. Oh, you know, bad jokes never get old. So, well, if you ask my wife, they do. That's right. I'm talking about you, honey. All right, so let's come back down here, as we say in the dirty south. Take your right lens, put it on the platform. Now... 
this is a block or as i like to call them jenny from the block i need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting so i need a double-sided adhesive sticker of which i've got two left that was close i almost ran out so the black side is the sticky side i would not be able to have them i do not have a magnetic personality so let me attach that to one of the blocks put that over there on the platform get the second block ready now on the back is a little silver button that is a magnet it's going to do its job twice tonight the first time is right now and pull the paper away to make the black side sticky i'm going to marry this magnet to something magnetical inside the arm now the reason why i put those three dots in there is your lens has to be oriented in there just perfectly if it gets off kilter you're just not going to see as well so that's why i put the three dots now this blue cross is the geometric center of your frame if you were to measure vertically and horizontally you would come in dead center that's where that blue cross is your pupil is just inset from there there's a little orange cross so that red dot in the center your optical center is going to go there these other two dots that i put on there tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly and i'm going to hit this button the arm's going to come down and place the block onto your right lens let's do the same thing now for the left lens now it does not have the three dots your prescription is completely spherical so literally it could rotate and it doesn't matter where it goes but i'm still going to place it in there perfectly pull the paper away to make the black side sticky get the magnet lined up in there perfectly now your pupillary distance is mirrored from your right eye over to the left which is 33 if it were different now would be the time to change it but it ain't so i ain't doing nothing except making an awesome pair of glasses so i'm going to hit that button again the arm's going to come down and place the block onto your left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own. Put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses anymore. You won't need this guy anymore is what I was going to say. Now, the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your polycarbonate lens material. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little bevel, that's what's going to put the bevel on your lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So now the magnet, it's going to do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. Yeah, I know, more bad jokes. You're going to get plenty of them tonight. So, actually, this machine does not cost $40,000. It costs $1. This cost $39,999. It's my stylus. If I didn't have this, could I do that? Oh, well, I guess I could. I spent $39,999 on nothing. Well, I still got this one. It works on Apple products too. So, these are polycarbonate lenses. I do not want to polish the edge of the lens. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I only want to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. And yes, one of my phones is ringing, but you guys are just going to have to wait. I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two styluses. It's going to measure the lens, make sure it's large enough to fit into the frame. And it's actually going on, you can see as it traces, and it's actually going to measure twice. The old carpenter saying, measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Now with your prescription, you have very little edge thickness anyway but I cut some very strong lenses and it becomes more critical later. Now, if you see light flickering in the background, that is water running. It's only there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate cuts dry, where plastic and high index lenses cut wet. In just a moment, you will see the lens as it touches down onto the cutting wheel. And it looks like it's snowing. That is your polycarbonate material cutting away. Now, the your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. These are the Essilor brand of lenses. Essilor calls polycarb airwear because they feel it's as light as air. These are the initials TR, which stands for Transition 7. GY is for gray. You don't have to take the abbreviations. We got that there. The Transition Signature 7 gray lenses. And of course, with Crizal Alizé. Now, I'll demonstrate the transitions later. Well, first, let me tell you about your lens. Polycarbonate. One of the great things about polycarb is that it's 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable 
Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every few hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now, the, the Cresol anti-glare coating, it's actually three features in one. The first feature is that it eliminates glare, especially glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights, that kind of thing. Now the second feature, it's also known as an ARC, which stands for anti-reflective coating, is it eliminates reflections. So it makes for much better eye contact when someone's looking at you and they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses, they're seeing just your eyes. And of course, the th reason why most people get it because of anti-reflection, if you take a selfie or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. But the third feature, which is the practical side that I like, is that because it costs well over a million dollars for the machine that applies and actually vaporizes seven different coatings onto your lens. So because it takes 24 hours and costs over a million dollars to do, Cruzal puts the hardest scratch coating of any manufacturer on the lens to protect their time and investment. Now in just a moment I will open this door with my mind. You like that? You know I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes a while but I can do it. I just gotta stare at them. Just like I stare at goats. Okay so Use my thumbnail to make sure all the debris is gone from the edge of your lens. I'm going to tuck your lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down at the nose. It snaps right in. Imagine that. So let's go ahead and start cutting your left lens. Let's flip that over to L and hit the start button over here. Actually, where is it? Hit the start button and again, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two wide styluses to make sure it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the frame and as always measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing and of course you have no edge thickness whatsoever so since your left lenses begin cutting let's go ahead and continue to work on the right we will come back down here so your right eye reads minus one and a quarter minus a quarter at nine it's still on nine because I didn't have to move it for your left lens. I'm going to put it in just over this red dot, which is your optical center. Put it in there and I'm reading minus one and a quarter. So the way prescriptions work, the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero, which we in the business call Plano and goes up from there. Point from zero to 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0.75, one, one and a quarter. So you need five steps of minification, not magnification, that's why there's a minus sign. You need five steps of minification without your glasses on. Everything is actually too large than it really appears. So when you put your glasses on, it will shrink things down to the correct size. Now once everything is the correct size, you have an additional one step of astigmatism correction. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. Everyone freaks out when they hear the word astigmatism. It is not a disease, it is not an affliction. It fluctuates, it comes and goes, and it's no big deal. Think of it as the fine tune knob. And we're gonna turn that knob to nine. A straight line is zero to 180 with 90 being in the center. So we're gonna turn that knob to about nine, just off the 180 meridian. Now, this is an arbitrary number. It could be anywhere from 0 to 180. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number isn't. So let's check your astigmatism correction, of which you have the smallest amount, 1 quarter. And when we turn it, we end up with minus 150, which is exactly halfway between 1 and 2. Jesse, you remember high school algebra where you have to add two like signs together? Yeah, don't worry. I've, I've forgotten everything I learned in high school algebra too. Let's use today's terminology. Someone had borrowed $1.25 from you and then they borrowed another 25 cents, they would owe you 150. That's where we're at, minus 150 in the red. Now your left eye is going to read to be a total of minus 175 total. And we'll check that when that comes out. Now, 
your Gucci case, your Gucci cloth. I've already showed you your card of authenticity. Of course, Ferenz 1921, which is Italian for Florence. That's where my wife and I honeymooned in Florence, South Carolina, or Florence, Italy. I can't remember. There was a nice museum there and a river running through it. But this is your Gucci cloth. This is your Gucci case. Jesse, go ahead and open this door for you. Use your mind using telekinesis. Pretty good, Jesse. Your first day on the job and you're able to do it. But this is your Gucci case. It has the, the Gucci chain. That is what these logos are. It is on the, the sleeve as well. I know it looks like it's been run over by a truck, but it stores flat to fit in your pocket, your book bag, anything like that. And when you want to use it, it unfolds. I wish you could smell this Italian leather. This thing smells incredible. You're going to smell it soon enough. But when you want to use it, it unfolds, and then you can just put your glasses in there. Of course, it's going to be in there when I ship it to you. But then it just snaps shut, and then when you want to actually carry it with you, it folds down to minimize its footprint, if you will. And then it just stores flat in your back pocket, your, again, briefcase, any way you want to carry it. So that's that. Now, where are we at? The left lens. Come on, left lens. Come on. Let's take it out of the edger. Wipe everything off here. Where'd that frame go? It's down. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and tuck your left lens in. We're going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Push down at the nose. It snaps right in. Hopefully you got all that. I apologize if I miss everything. I am not a professional cinematographer. I am a professional licensed optician. Although it's hard to tell that too. But where are we at okay so i'm going to put this in the lensometer right above that red dot which is the pupillary distance of your left eye check the power and i'm getting minus 175 one tick mark away from two so that is perfect i couldn't make this any better if i'd made it myself wait i did make this okay so your pupillary distance is 66 so i'm going to turn the card around place my pd stick against my thumb on your right lens and when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 66 millimeters, so that is made perfectly. And of course, this is the time in every video as I clean that I mentioned that when you receive these in the mail, and of course, free shipping anywhere in the US and military places all over the world, but when you receive these in the US, there's in the mail, and of course, hang on, I got mine, but let me use yours. I'm going to make sure everyone gets a free premium microfiber cleaning cloth with my logo. And I field test everyone to make sure it works because I don't want to send you a defective cleaning cloth. But as I was saying, if I don't get sidetracked myself again, when you get these in the mail, there's a very small chance that these could fit, you know, too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to fit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by your own local place. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust them. Although with these rubber temples, you can, almost, you can adjust these yourself. But still, nonetheless, it wouldn't hurt to have a professional do it. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And when I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I want to take mine off and press down on the counter. They, they wobble, but they sit level on me. And by the way, I have the Gucci 2248, which comes in, in the color 4VD. Because if you're not 4VD, you're against it. <laughs> Sorry, I just love my bad humor. You know, it's always a good day when the clown gets to laugh at work. But we have almost the same temple. Now I have a metal front with nose pads. You have the plastic front with no nose pads. But we have the same temple. You have the black rubber with the red green. I have the blue rubber with, is that black? I can't see without my glasses on. Dark blue and red or black and red. I'm not sure, but it is, it is pretty cool how we have the same rubberized temple. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. So I flip it over, press down, there is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. Of course, you can see the little Gucci emblem right there at the corner. This is an awesome rubber. Now, I have oily skin, so that's the nice thing, is that it's easy to adjust these. But the rubber just grips naturally and makes it a great fitting frame, as well as being very lightweight and very durable. So this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them in my little expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light over here in the corner my little transitions box and i'm going to turn on the light and as you will see it takes about 
30 to 45 seconds for all transition lenses to darken when you go outside. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now Jesse, pay attention, this is important. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're gonna to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks till they reach their final setting. After that, they'll work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is when you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's ultraviolet light so they, your dashboard doesn't crack and that's what prevents them from turning dark. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken or as soon as you get out of your car, they will darken. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 75 and 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. I remind everyone when it's triple digits outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So this is the first time they've been, whoa, almost dropped them. This is the first time they've been activated. Jesse, don't worry, they're gonna get darker. Come on, Jesse, we talked about this, don't you remember? But that's it, if anyone has any questions, just email me through the website or just click the contact me button or email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Jesse, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses with Transitions Gray and Crizali Z for your Gucci 1066 in color 4UP. And of course, this frame sells for $289. You get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses. You paid $50 to upgrade to Transitions. You paid the $40 for the Crizal Alize. So it was a combined price of $289 for the frame, $50 for the frame and prescription, $50 to upgrade to Transitions, $40 to upgrade to Crizal for a total of $379. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.